This is an application problem involving basketball courts and the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, the question is, how much longer is an NBA basketball court than a high school court? Uh, they are actually different sizes. Um, a couple other differences between an NBA court and a high school court is that uh, the key is wider in an NBA court. Uh, and also the three-point line is actually further back uh, with an NBA court. Uh, but anyway, how much longer is an NBA basketball court than a high school court? Um, so what we need to do is we need to figure out uh, what is the length of this side here. Uh, let's just call it X. <clears throat> And we also need to figure out what is the length of this side here. Uh, let's call it y. Uh, once we find those two values, uh, we can just subtract to find out how much longer uh, one number is compared to the other number. So let me give myself a little bit of room here to work. Uh, let's start with our first court. This is our NBA court. This is the one that has the three-point line that is a little bit further back. Uh, it's a rectangle. The NBA basketball court is a rectangle, and you can see you have a uh, right triangle here. So we are allowed to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Um, let's plug in our values here. So my A value is 50. So 50 squared plus, uh, I called that side X. So let's plug that in, plus X squared is equal to uh, now you have a choice. Uh, if you're comfortable with working with the exact value, uh, the 2 times the square root of 2,834, uh, plug that in. Uh, if you're not really comfortable with that, uh, you can use the approximate decimal value. Now the only thing about using the uh, 106.5 feet is that uh, your x value is going to be a little bit off you know, since you have a rounded value f with that diagonal. Um, but it, it'll honestly, it'll get you close enough that you'll be able to uh, round to the nearest whole number and you know, you'll still get the correct value. Uh, but anyway, I'm just going to show you how to deal with the, the 2 times the square root of 2,834. Uh, to solve for x, uh, first step we want to do is square the 50 uh, and if you take 50 squared that's 2,500 uh, now if I square 2 two times the square root of 2,834 uh, this is something that uh, in my opinion is very tricky to deal with so let me just take a moment here and explain to you how to do this um, Hopefully you understand that if you square something, you are actually multiplying it by itself. So what I really want to know here is I want to know what is 2 root 2,834 times 2 root 2,834. Part of this is really easy to multiply together. Um, you know, due to the fact that I have properties with multiplication, like the commutative property and the associative property, uh, you know, I can switch this thing around and I can multiply the 2 times 2 first, uh, which is 4. Uh, and now the next part would be multiplying the square root of 2,834 times the square root of 2,834. Uh, if you're comfortable with square roots, uh, you'll realize that that is... 2,834. Uh, just to explain that a little bit more, uh, so if I'm taking this times this, you know, I am essentially taking root 2,834. Since I'm multiplying it by itself, I'm squaring it. Um, and the thing that's really important to understand about this situation right here is that if you take the square root of something and then square it, those are opposite or inverse operations. They, they basically undo each other, cancel each other out, and you're just left with the number underneath the radical. Um, so my value uh, is, you know, for the 
square root of 2,834 times the square root of 2,834. It's just the number 2,834. Uh, let me erase this so that I don't run out of room here. Uh, but anyway, I still have to do 4 times 2,834, and that would be 11,336. 11,336. My next step uh, with the problem would just be to subtract 2,500 from both sides of the equation. This, of course, cancels out. And if I work out 11,336 minus 2,500, I'm going to get 8,836. Uh, if I have x squared equals 8,836, to get that x value by itself, I need to square root both sides of the equation. And if I take the square root of 8,836, it actually works out perfectly to 94 feet. So an NBA court is 94 feet uh, long. Uh, what about a high school court? Uh, and essentially, the steps are very similar uh, to what we just did. Uh, you know, we're going to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, and we're going to plug in, uh, remember I labeled this with a y, we're going to plug in our values. So once again, I have a right triangle here. Uh, since a basketball court is a rectangle, both sides of it are 50 feet. So I'm going to do 50 squared plus y squared equals 2. Square root of 2,389, and then I need to square all of that. Uh, just like before, uh, the 50 squared is going to be 2,500. Uh, and I'm not going to spend as much time on this part of the problem as I did before. Uh, another way to think of that, by the way, is to square both of these parts in here. So the 2 squared, so I can think of this, let me just write this down. I can think of this as 2 squared times root 2,389 squared. And that's just going to be 4 times 2,389. Let me bring down the other side of my equation here. And 4 times 2,389 is 9,556. Uh, subtract 2,500 from both sides, and that will give me 7,056. And square root both sides of the equation to get your final answer, and you'll end up with 84 feet. Uh, now remember from the previous page, our MBA court uh, was 94 feet, our high school court was 84 feet, so how much longer is an NBA court? Well, if you just do 94 minus 84, uh, you'll get 10. An NBA basketball court is 10 feet longer than a high school court.